Hey there, restaurant owners. Are you afraid to give up food ordering because, well, the person you gave the ordering to, the responsibility buys too much product? Is the overordering emptying your bank account and you're finding it hard to pay your bills? Or maybe you're just frustrated because, well, you're running out to buy product because they're not ordering enough. Or worse, you're having to 86 items, right? Not a good way to run your restaurant. As a result, you might feel like you have to place all the orders. Or maybe you've got to keep a toxic leader in your kitchen, well, employed, because you can't let them go. They're the only ones who know how to order. Hey there, Restaurant Pro. This is Dave Scott Peters, restaurant expert, coach, and creator of the Restaurant Prosperity Formula. And today I'm going to share with you how you can implement a system where anyone who is trained to count can place darn near a perfect food order. Are you ready? I'm going to teach you the math behind my restaurant order wizard that is a part of my restaurant prosperity coaching video and systems library. When used correctly, it truly can change your world. I could place an order from my desk here in Phoenix, Arizona, accurately, more accurately than anybody in your kitchen. If you give me the right data that we use in the spreadsheet. Now I'm going to teach you the math behind it. You could create it yourself. Imagine what it means for you if you had a system like this in place. So let's jump right into it. Now, in order to set your par levels for ordering properly, the restaurant order wizard has several things that need to happen. Number one, you've got to gather the right information. And if you're using software, it's easy. It's export a, 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 a dump of information in an Excel spreadsheet or document, and then copy and paste it into the spreadsheet because the equations are easy. But for many of you who are not using food, food and beverage software for managing your inventory and ordering and, and recipe cards and such, you're going to have to gather the data. So number one, you're going to grab a descending case report from all your vendors. Now you want to make it for the same time period. Like each report you want from whatever date to the whatever date so that it all lines up and you put it in one spreadsheet. Now I'm going to warn you, the moment you call your sales rep and say, hey, can I get a descending case report? They're going to go, what are you doing? Are you shopping me? Are you leaving me? What's going on? Just let them know you're trying to set your pars. Now you want it in a spreadsheet format so we can copy and paste it in to whatever spreadsheet you create, unless you're a member of mine and you've got access to mine. Now you're also going to gather any store receipts, any vendor invoices that, that you can think of that has food product on it. So if you ran to Costco, you ran to smart and final, you know, any of these restaurant supply stores that supply you food, you've got to have those receipts that includes maybe the, the, uh, produce vendor that hand writes their invoices. Somebody has got to gather that data as well for the same date ranges. Now, the other part is, as we do this, you're going to enter your data. Now we got to compile it, put it all together. And so again, for the large vendors, we can copy and paste the data for the smaller vendors. We literally have to type it in, into the spreadsheet. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Once I have that data, these are the math equations, the arithmetic, because somebody's going to correct me on that, that you're going to use. We're going to need to come up with our usage ratio. Now usage ratio is going to be really important. We can either use purchases divided by actual category sales, meaning food purchases divided by food sales, gross food sales for that same time period we gather the invoices for, or better yet, if using food and beverage software, and we know what our use is, replace purchases with use. That becomes even more accurate and more powerful for you. But I'm going under the guise that Hey, you don't have that software in place. You don't have that data. So we're going to use purchases. And I'm going to tell you again, I can order from Phoenix accurately, more accurately than you can in your own damn restaurant. If somebody will do an accurate count for me, I don't want to just so we're clear. Then we're going to have our projected par levels, which is that usage ratio we just created times forecasted sales by category. So if in food, I have my ratio and I know what that is, and I'll show you demonstrate what that is in a moment. I'm going to multiply that by my forecasted food sales for my next week, my next in between order day, delivery day, order day, delivery day, order day, second delivery day is going to be the window I use for my purchases. Again, I'll show you in just a moment. Then I've got to make sure that I 
have multiple products, maybe from different vendors that are the same product, chicken, chicken, right? Whatever that is, a breast, a thigh, does not matter. And I've got to combine the, that data to make sure I don't have usage or projected par levels for two different products when it's really the same. So you want to combine that information. In my spreadsheet, I do that automatically. So let's walk through it. First, we grab a date range. And we grab our sales, our gross sales before discounts, not including sales tax, for each one of our categories. In this case, food, $335,656 for, again, this 92-day period. Doesn't matter if it's 30 days, 160, does not matter as long as the data, you have the date range set. And I do that for each one of the categories. So I can use this for bottle beer, draft beer, wine, and so on. But we're focusing on food in this example. The next thing I'm going to do is grab all the invoice data. What is the invoice data? Well, it's column A is my, my vendor, the product name, the way it's brought to me. Again, if I get my broadline distributors, I just copy and paste this data into the appropriate column. The product ID. Now, that's not as important for you to calculate your PAR levels, but it, I'd like to have that data. Then we've got categories that we set up that where does it belong? In this case, you see food, NA Bev, liquor, wine, bottle beer, draft beer, paper disposables. How does that, where does that come from and what, or not come from, but what should it be when my accounting? Then we've got product type, um, which is nothing that's so important for what you're going to do. So I'm going to skip that. And then I've got a grouping that these are products that I buy from other vendors that are the same product. So I can combine them when I do the math now. I go one step further. We're going to skip the default because it really doesn't matter uh, for what we're doing here because we're you're not going to re recreate my spreadsheet exactly the same way. But I'd like to know the brand. So I'm going to ordering. I know it. I need to know the pack size. So I know compares apples to apples, depending on if I'm buying it by the pound or by the each somewhere else, the case, whatever it may be. And then here are all the, the units when I convert that it is, let me go backwards here, that this is one pound. So I know again, when I do those conversions from there, I've got my purchase unit price. Now that's going to be FIFO first in first out the last, the most recent invoice. That's what that price is going to be because we're going to make an assumption that if we buy a new product, it goes behind the old product. So it is the, that product is going to leave the shelves, the old one. And what's still on the shelf would be what you just paid for it. First in, first out. Just the same way we rotate stock, we're going to rotate the price. Makes life easier. Then we've got our purchase units, the number of pounds, the number of cases, the number of eaches of whatever came in on those invoices. So this is important because this is what truly we're going to be using for creating a par levels. The price isn't so important. Maybe for ordering it will be, and I'll show you how I take it one step further with my spreadsheet. But bottom line, here's all my purchases. Now, I'm going to move this over just one second here, and I want to show you the actually spent. Is that important for this? No, but it's nice to have information if I ever sort this and want to see what, what I'm spending the most money on. Now, for my system, I go one step further, and I also put the order days in, and I'll show you what that means. It's going to be very difficult for you to, to uh, duplicate, but the basics are going to be easy. The next piece, since I know what everything I sell what I've got is I come in here and I'm going to put in order day to next delivery day and what those forecasted sales are. Understand? I'm going to have the ability to sit there and look at and say, what will my sales be from the day I order, which is going to replace what was from the, left the shelves in the past, get me back to stock. Well, no, I got to go all the way to the second order that when I deplete product, I still have three days worth of food on my shelves. I'm not just so stressed about what I have, but I'm not over ordering either. Now, what I'm going to do in this example to create the math, I want you to notice here, I've set up that I can choose the days that I want these purchase orders, if you will, and par levels to be created. So I'm going to click on generate par report, give it a second down here, and you're going to see that we just created two new tabs. So I've got the two different orders here, but what you're going to notice is I've got my grouping, which is fine, my food. What we really want to come down to is we come over here to our projected par levels, column I. Now you're going to notice here that ground beef, based on my usage, 
right? The purchases in this case. We have a ratio that basically says for every dollar in food sales, remember the actual sales? Let me take you back to that. I'm going to go to actual sales. If I take $335,000 and I go to my invoice data and I say I used 800 pounds, right? We go to the equation. The equation is usage ratio or purchases divided by actual sales. So I take my purchases of 800 pounds and I divide it into $335,000. That's going to put me in a position where what? I know that the ratio might be 0.000063 pounds for every dollar. That's how much I use 0.000063 with that ratio. I multiply that ratio by what? My forecasted sales. Right. And the beautiful part is when I go to my, because my forecast is here, it is actually already generating the right number because it knows that 76.69% of sales are food. So it's going to give you your forecasted food sales. It's going to know what that usage ratio is. And it automatically tells you need 850 pounds. You're also going to notice here on row six, I've got to check daily. What does that mean? It means the usage is so low like maybe parsley or something like that, that it says you should, you really should count it on a daily basis. Ah, but there's one more piece here. You're going to notice that if I come back over to, and this is something that's going to be difficult for you to create, but I want to show you what I do is I go in here because I set these order days, only the products for the day of the week that I'm placing that order are going to show up on that. We're not going to put the whole list of items. We're going to consolidate to this is what I order on Monday. And this is what I order on Wednesday. Now, here's a beautiful part. Once you have this data, you can go one step further. And if we look at the, the beef here at the top, if I go inventory that I have 50 pounds, it's going to change my order to 800 pounds. If I have 50 pounds, it's 800, but I know that I have a catering and I want to order 900 pounds, I can literally overwrite it. And it's going to tell me how much I'm going to order and how much money I'm going to spend. One step further, I come all the way to the bottom and actually let me do this. I want to uh, show for all vendors and then I come down to the bottom, going a little bit too far. Hold on one second. I want to show you the, uh, let me just check something out here. There it is. It's on this one. So down here is my Cisco. Total by category. Here's my U.S. food total by category. I can do some sorts, things like that. But the bottom line is by having this data, by just following the three arithmetic equations I gave you, gathering the right data, you're going to be able to place an order without any kitchen experience, without any knowledge, does not matter. The math will not lie to a point where if your recipe costing cards call for six ounces of French fries, but you've had lurch on the line, put eight ounces on every single plate. It's going to order enough food that you put eight ounces on a plate. It's the way you execute your food, your recipes, not what the ideal should be. So if you want to put yourself in a position that you're not fearful of losing a kitchen pro, that you want to take control of your budget, take control of your inventory, take control of ordering, give up ordering without giving up your checkbook, give up ordering without worrying about thousands of dollars of extra food on the shelves or worst case scenario, very little on the shelves and your 86 items and losing opportunity or register. Well, then you need to put this in place. It's going to take time, but I'm going to tell you that time is well spent. Be sure to join me live every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube, travel schedule permitting, where I'll get you pumped about the upcoming weekend, get you excited about crushing your goals and finding the motivation to be best you possible. Plus, I'll answer your burning questions live.